Coco Vaughn, probably one of the most classic French dishes out there. It translates to chicken and wine. You are going to hone your culinary skills today, my friends. It is super good. You are going to absolutely love this recipe. So yeah, obviously things look a little bit different right now. I no longer live in Chicago. My studio is long gone. I'm literally working in like a house kitchen right now until my new studio is done being built. Am I going to have that perfect bright white shot every single time? Yeah, maybe. I'll get there a few times. But am I absolutely going to give you as much information just like I always have about each recipe with tons of shots? Of course, I'm going to give that to you. That has always been my plan since day one. My Comey's is to teach you these fundamental techniques. I'm going to do it every single time for every video that I ever am going to create. Now, with that being said, let's chat a second about this Coco Vaughn. We are going to kick it off by making some mirepoix. So I've got some onion, celery, and carrots. The first thing we want to do is just roughly chop up some stalks of celery. It does not have to be perfect in any way. Again, it's just going in a marinade. Next, I've got some carrots. We want to peel these and just like the celery, roughly chop it. Do not have to be uniform, does not have to be perfect. Once they are chopped, just simply set them to the side. Next, I've got a few garlic cloves, which I'm just gonna smash with the side of a knife. This will sort of activate them, make them more aromatic into the marinade. Next, I've got a yellow onion. I'm just gonna slice off each of the sides, the ends there, slice it in half. Of course, peel it, peel off that outside layer there. That's no good in this marinade. And then again, just roughly chop it. You don't even have to do it the way that I did it. Just give it a chop, get everything nice and cut up. And at this point, we're going to add it to the celery, carrots, and garlic in a plastic bag. Now, you can absolutely just use a plastic container with a lid. I just use plastic bags because it's easy to mix ingredients around in there. But that part is totally up to you. Now, here's what we're going to do next. I've got a fabricated whole chicken cut into parts, breast, thighs, drums, and wings. I always like to use whole chicken. I feel like you get the best value when doing this. And plus, when it's done, you have a carcass, which you can freeze, pull out later, and make chicken stock with. Yes, you can just use thighs, drums, or breasts. It's totally up to you. But since I did it this way, I'm also going to French the breasts. By doing this, what we do is we have that little sort of leg sticking out. We want to cut around it using a very, very sharp knife, just like you see here, and then start to scrape up. We want to expose that bone. This is purely for looks. You do not have to do this, but again, I'm going to hone those skills in this video recipe, and you'll be better for it. Once you get to the top with all the skin and a little bit of meat, just slice it off. You can see here a nice, clean chicken bone. This looks fantastic. Now what we're going to do is take all of these chicken parts and place it in the plastic bag along with the mirepoix. Once it is in there, now we're going to add in some goodness to help with that marinade. I've got a nice Beaujolais wine. When in Rome, we're making French food. You could use a Burgundy or a Cote de Rhone. If you had Cab or Merlot, totally fine. Use what you got. I'm going to add in two to three cups or so. Then I'm going to hit it with a little bit of cognac. There are some classic recipes that cook with the cognac. I like it in the marinade. And now for a little fat, this is totally optional and definitely a little tweak that I added to this, some olive oil. We're going to season it up with a little bit of sea salt and fresh cracked black pepper. And then at this point, go ahead and zip up the bag. And this is the reason I definitely like to use plastic bags. It's because I can move things around. I can sort of infuse those flavors, make sure this marinade is touching every little square centimeter of the chicken so it will have the most flavor possible. We're heading right over to the refrigerator. We're going to pop it in there, make sure it's nice and cool. Now we're going to leave that Coco Vaughn marinating overnight. When I say overnight, here's what I mean. If you make it at 4 in the afternoon, or 8 at night, or 12 in the afternoon, the next day, okay? There's no perfect. You have to make it at 9 p.m. When you wake up at 6 a.m., you have to prepare this, okay? Overnight. Could be up to 24 hours. Totally fine to do. The longer, the better. Remember when it marinates, all those flavors infuse. If you can't do it overnight, and you really want to make this thing the day of, at least hit it in there for 4 to 6 hours. You should be good to go. Here's what we're going to do next. I'm going to go ahead and pull out our chicken. It looks fantastic. It smells great. I'm going to remove it from the marinade. There are a lot of classic Cocoa Vun recipes that call for you to use the marinade, drain it, and cook with it. I was always taught whenever you're marinating anything, discard that liquid, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be safe. 
Go ahead and set the chicken to the side, and we've got a little bit of prep here. So I'm going to slice the ends off of a yellow onion, cut it in half. Of course, I'm going to peel it, and then I'm going to small dice it. This is just going to be cooked with a little bit, add a little flavor, set it to the side. I've got a couple of carrots. We just want to peel those up, and then I'm going to thickly slice it. Since this is going to braise for about 75 to 90 minutes, thicker slices take longer to cook, so they won't be mushy at the end of cooking it. Sometimes if you cut those carrots or other vegetables too small and cook for long times, you end with mushy vegetables, and that's no good. Next, of course, I've got some garlic. You know I can't stand chopping it anymore, so I'm going to run it right through a garlic press. Make sure I get all those little good morsels off there, scrape it with my knife. And now we're going to make a bouquet garni. I've got a leek, which I'm going to slice in half and peel off the outside layer. I'll keep the rest of the leek for some stock. Add a nice bunch of fresh Italian flat leaf parsley, a big old sprig of fresh thyme. I'm going to put two of those leek peelings right on the outside. And then using some butcher's twine, all you do is simply tie a double knot. This will hold it securely in place and then make a bow. I mean, it's just like you're tying shoes, my friends. It's really that simple. Go ahead, set it to the side once you're done. And with this bouquet garni, if you don't have any butcher's twine, it's totally fine just to put everything in there loose. You're just gonna have to do a little bit of fishing when this recipe is done so that you get all those thyme sprigs and parsley sprigs and the leeks out of there. It's no big deal though. If you don't have it, don't sweat it. Now. I've got some button mushrooms using a damp towel. You should just wipe off any excess dirt. Want them to be nice and clean. You could also peel a layer off that outside cap if you wanted to as well. If your mushrooms are big, these are pretty big. I'm gonna cut them in half. You could even cut them into quarters. If they're smaller, I actually like to leave them whole, just like the way they look. Set them to the side, and now I've got some pearl onions. This part is totally optional, okay? You can use a regular onion if you'd like. I like pearl onions, they're nice and sweet and they just look really good in this dish. That's all I can say. Slice off that root end of the pearl onions. Here is an awesome trick for you guys. Go ahead and add them back to the bowl. We are going over to a pot of boiling water. We're gonna add them in there. We're gonna maybe cook them for 45 seconds to one minute. They're gonna start to soften up. Immediately remove them, drain them, and then what you wanna do is run some cold water all over the onions. We wanna get them so that we can touch them so they're not extremely, extremely hot. And here is why we do that. Go ahead and shake off the water, take them out. Here's how simple they are to peel. Just give them a little squeeze from the one end and boom, they pop right out. Let me show you again. This is so awesome. Love this trick. Little squeeze, boom, a beautiful, perfect pearl onion. Don't lie, that trick is a total game changer. It literally saved my life in the restaurant industry instead of having to peel all those little pearl onions. It's super easy to do, takes a little bit extra time, but you're not gonna be trying to peel all those onions, which is gonna take you literally like an hour. You're welcome, my friends. Here's what we're gonna do now. The last and final thing of prep, we are going to slice up some very thick cut bacon, just like you see here. Once it's sliced, add it to a bowl. Now go ahead and grab that bacon and grab our marinated fabricated chicken. We are going right over to a Dutch oven. This is a cocotte made specifically for Coco Vaughn. You definitely don't need it, just a Dutch oven. And over medium heat, add in those bacon lardons. We're going to cook it. We just want to crisp it up, render some of that bacon fat. Tons of flavor in there. We're going to saute in here, so make sure that it renders off quite a bit of fat. And then go ahead and set those lardons right to the side in a small bowl. Don't put them far because we will need them in just a little bit. Set that to the side and then add our chicken right in there. We are cooking in this bacon fat. We want to get a very nice brown, beautiful golden sear on these. It's gonna take about six minutes. Now let me stop and say this. Don't sweat it if your pot isn't big enough to roast up everything at one time. You can absolutely do it in batches because when we put the chicken back in there with the liquid, it could literally be stacked up on each other. As long as it's in the liquid, you're gonna be good to go. Here's what we do now. After that six to seven minute period, go ahead and give it a little flip. You see that beautiful golden brown, and it's just like extra brown because of that deep red marinade it sat in. We're not trying to cook it through. Again, we just wanna brown them on each side, maybe the other side, four to five minutes. Take it out, set it to the side on a plate, and because there's so much rendered bacon fat and chicken fat in there, I'm gonna drain off about half of it. We definitely do not need it. You could discard this fat, strain it and freeze it, maybe put it in some confit, totally up to you. Now add in those small diced yellow onions, followed up with those large cut carrots. 
We're going to hit it with a little bit of that finely minced garlic through the garlic press. We're just going to sweat these on low to medium heat for three to four minutes. We're not looking to cook them through. Just get a nice little sweat on them, if you will. This looks fantastic. And now we want to make a roux. So add in your flour. It's going to mix with the fat. And this is going to help thicken up our braising liquid and also make it like a nice gravy. Once the flour is coated all over the vegetables, I'm going to add it with the rest of that Beaujolais wine. Got about two cups or so. That should be good for this. Plenty of flavor. It will immediately thicken up and you will notice it right away. Just like this. Almost looks like a crazy thick gravy. And now I'm going to add in a combination of chicken stock and beef stock. You can use one or the other. Just chicken, just beef. Take your pick. Traditionally, it's veal stock. That's really hard to come by. Now I'm gonna season it up well with salt and pepper. Remember, this is our braising liquid, so taste it. Make sure it tastes delicious. Now add in our bouquet garni, which looks awesome. It'll be very easy to fish out of there when it's done cooking. And then what you wanna do is simply add the chicken in there and make sure it fills up. I know you had to do it in batches, like I said, but you'll be able to sort of stack it on there. No problem at all. I'm gonna transfer burners because the one I cooked it on was super high and hot. This back one is nice and low. Go ahead and add the lid on there. And what we want to do is cook it for in between 75 and 90 minutes total. Those culinary skills been tested yet? We are almost finished. We want to quickly saute up some mushrooms and those pearl onions and put them in there. This is going to add a lot more flavor. And then we're going to add another thing in there. But first, let's saute those off really quick. In a large saute pan over medium high heat, we're gonna add in just a little bit of olive oil. Now go ahead and add in those sliced mushrooms. We wanna sort of brown these up real well. Add in the pearl onions as well, all at the same time, no problem. And again, we're just sauteing these. We wanna get a golden brown on these. We do wanna cook these most of the way because we're doing this about 15 minutes before our cook oven is done cooking. Once they are browned like this, looks fantastic. We are going to add them right to that cocoa bone. So go ahead and transfer it over there. Move the lid off and then add the mushrooms in there. This looks fantastic. It smells super, super good, you guys. And then I like to sort of mix everything in there using the spoon. Just sort of move some things around. And last but not least, don't you dare forget that cooked bacon. Going to add an incredible amount of flavor in here. Obviously, also incredibly classic as well. Now what we're going to do at this point is just remove it from the burner. And you know what time it is, my friends. Even if I'm in a new kitchen, it's time to plate this up in slow-mo. I'm going to add the chicken to a nice shallow bowl. I think it's a good presentation because you've got a lot of liquid here and sometimes it can run off a plate. That's why I have choose to use a bowl here. Now go ahead and grab a huge scoop of the braising liquid and those vegetables dump it all over the top and then we're just going to finish it with some whole parsley leaves you could chop it up too and man oh man check out this beauty so delicious and such a fantastic meal to serve up to friends or family or even a special occasion maybe even you're doing thanksgiving you want to do a whole turkey Coco Vaughn is where it's at, my friends. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. Definitely, I mean definitely, check out this video. It was made for you and you'll love it. We'll see you on there.